Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Muhammad Al Hafi and I'm a Math Olympiad coach. In this video, we'll be solving one of the most famous problems at the International Mathematical Olympiad. And this problem is problem one of the 2010 IMO. This problem is a functional equation and the reason it is really famous is because it demonstrates a very powerful method and that is the substitution strategy. In fact, we'll be solving this problem by simply substituting x and y with just some numbers. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So in this problem, we're asked to find all functions f from r to r such that the following relation holds f of y times floor x equals f of x times floor f of y. So what exactly is the floor function? Well, floor x is simply the integer part of x. And by definition, it is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. So let's take some examples. So what is the floor of 3.3? What is the integer part of 3.3? That's simple, it's 3. What is the floor of 2.7? It's 2, because it's the integer part of 2.7. But what is the floor of 3? It's 3. Of course, the floor of an integer is this integer itself. But what about floor of negative values, so what is the floor of minus 2.7? So the floor of minus 2.7 is minus 3. It's not minus 2 because the floor, the floor function is always less than the number inside the floor. So minus 3 is less than minus 2.7, but minus 2 is greater than minus 2.7. So that is simply the floor function. So now we understand what is the floor function. Let's start with our functional equation. So the first thing we do when solving a functional equation is simply substituting with small numbers. And what is the simplest number to start substituting with? That is 0. So let's start by substituting each x with 0. So let's do this. So we will write p 0 y. And by that we mean Substitute each x with 0 and keep y as itself. And let's find out what we will have. So now we have f of uh, y times floor, uh, floor 0. And floor 0 is 0, so we have now f of 0 on the left-hand side. And here we have f of 0 times floor f of y. So now we have f of 0 equals f of 0 times floor f of y. And now we have two cases. The first is f of 0 equals 0. And the second is floor f of y equals 1. So let's discuss these two cases separately. So we'll start with case 1. And we'll discuss the first case, which is f of 0 is not equal to 1. f of 0 is not equal to 0, sorry. Uh, and this case, we will have floor f of y equals 1. Because we can divide both sides by f of 0. And now we have floor f of y equals 1. But what now? Now we have this is simply 1. So we can write our functional equation uh, in a new form. That is floor y times floor f of x, floor x equals f of x. Now with this some simple functional equation, uh, we can conclude that our function f is constant. And actually that's really simple. We just substitute x with 1. So if we substitute x with 1, we will have f of y equals f of 1. And that is constant. So let's write this. So we will substitute 1 and y. And now we have simply f of y equals f of 1, which is a constant c. So now we have f of y equals c, so our function is constant. But don't forget that 
floor f of y equals 1. That means that floor c equals 1. So what does that mean? What does it mean that we have an, some number c, its floor is 1? That simply means that c is between two numbers. c is greater than or equal to 1 and it's less than 2. So now we have this condition on c. But is it true that each constant function c that is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 2 satisfies this functional equation? Well, let's substitute. So here we have this f is c and this f is c. And since floor c is 1, we have c equals c and so it does. So now we have obtained our first solution, fx equals c, where c is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 2. So let's move to the second case. The second case is f of 0 equals 0. So let's write this case, f of 0 equals 0. And now, to use this information, we will take advantage of floor, floor x. How can we do that? Simply take some number alpha that is between 0 and 1. So we will have floor alpha is 0. So if we substitute x with alpha, this will be f of 0, which is 0. So the left-hand side is 0. Then the right-hand side is also 0. And we have two subcases. The first is f of alpha equals 0. And the second is floor f of y equals 0. So let's discuss these two subcases. So the first subcase is assume that there exists some number alpha such that alpha is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1 and f of alpha is not equal to 0. So in this case, we'll substitute x with alpha to find out that f of 0, which is 0, equals f of alpha and f of alpha is not 0. That's the reason why we substitute in this way. So now we must have floor f of y equals 0. So now we have floor f of y equals 0. So now we have in the original functional equation, the right hand side is 0, which means the left hand side is 0, and that means that our function is 0. So that means fx equals 0. So fx equals 0, and indeed fx equals 0 is a solution, note that 0 equals 0. But one thing that we should pay attention to is that in this case we have assumed that f of alpha is not equal to 0. So in this case we cannot write the solution is fx equals 0. So fx equals 0 is a solution, but not in this case. So this case is, we will refuse this case. So the subcase A did not give any solution. What about subcase B? Well, if we have no such an alpha, such that f of alpha equals 0, then we must have that f all numbers between 0 and 1, f of them equals 0. So, so we must have f of this interval equals 0. So in this case, what we will do? Uh, in the subcase A, we use this floor. But now we will use the floor of f of y. How can we use this? It's simple. Since we now have uh, f of this interval, we can take any number in this interval and substitute it with and substitute y, y with this number. So we'll have this f is 0, which means that the right-hand side must be 0, and so is the left-hand side. So let's take some number, for example, uh, 1 over 2 and substitute y with 1 over 2. So we will find out that this is 0, so this must be 0. So let's substitute uh, x with 2 and y with uh, a half. Then we will have f of 1 equals 0. So let's do this. So if we substitute x with 2 and y with half, we will get the right-hand side is 0, so the left-hand side is 0 which means that floor 2 equals 2, 2 times half is 1, so f of 1 equals 
0. So now we have f of 1 equals 0. And since we have f of 1 equals 0, then this case is solved by simply substituting x with 1. So if we substitute x with 1, we will have f of 1, which is 0, the right-hand side is 0, floor, x, uh, floor, floor is 1, so we will have f of y equals 0. So in this case, by simply substituting x with 0, we get that f of x or f of y equals 0. And so our function is 0. And indeed, we said that f y equals 0 is a solution. So now we have in this case uh, the zero solution. And that's it. We've obtained two sets of solutions in our magical box. And IMO 2010 problem 1 is solved. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends.